Good afternoon gardeners, it's Tuesday, July 20th, and today I'm going to show you all three different varieties of figs that you absolutely must be growing. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. So let's discuss why I'm going to recommend these three varieties of figs to you. Surprisingly, taste is not a factor. And the reason why I'm not making taste a factor is because taste is purely subjective. My favorite figs may not be your favorite figs. So I don't want to simply tell you these are the best tasting figs, end of subject, because that is not true. Instead, what I need to telegraph to you is I'm recommending these figs strictly based on their versatility. Growing figs is a big problem for most of us in the United States, and that's because figs come from Mediterranean climates, and they have a very unique precipitation pattern where they get virtually no rain at all during the summer. And that's a big problem because the majority of the United States of America gets significant rains in the summer. And where I live in the South, it's our heavy thunderstorm season and that is just not compatible with most varieties of figs. Figs evolve to ripen in almost perfect drought, and as a result, any rain that gets on the skin of the figs tends to make them crack, burst, and spoil, and then they get attacked by pests and they turn sour. So it's very important that for most of us, we find rain-resistant varieties. Another problem that we have here in the United States is our winters. Our winters are very cold in general, especially for our latitudes, where figs come come from, they experience very little frosts and freezes. Here, even deep south in the subtropics where I live, we still get heavy frosts and freezes that happen somewhere around 30 times on an average winter. So for all of you that are growing figs north of me, it becomes an even greater challenge. So the things that I'm really gauging here that make a fig a must have is the ability to hold up to rain and still have a good tasting fig in wet summers, the ability to tolerate frosts and freezes, and the ability to ripen in short seasons. And that's what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you three figs that can give you a main crop that is foolproof all the way up to, say, zone six, where you will be able to ripen the main crop and get good quality figs, and they'll also stand up to the occasional rain shower or thunderstorm. Now, that being said, we have had a horrible July here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. I live right around the Wilmington area, and we have received eight inches of rain so far, and it's only July. July 20th. So if I can grow figs in these conditions and get decent quality fruit, chances are you can as well. And that's why I am recommending these varieties. And the first variety I'm going to recommend is an absolute must have in any climate. And that is Ron de Bordeaux. And while it's not my absolute favorite fig, it is a must have for the following reasons. First of all, check out the insane production. This baby loads up with figs. They are on the smaller side, but Nonetheless, I have a number of figs turning. There's one, two, and three right there. Here's a bunch more figs that are starting to turn. And believe it or not, I have harvested already more than a dozen figs off of this tree. This is the earliest known fig aside from probably Celeste and Improved Celeste. And that's why you really need to have this fig. This will ripen for you in late June or early to mid July in the south. And in places with cooler climates, this will ripen main crop for you where other varieties fail. Even if you live in warm climates that can ripen any fig, like in my climate, it's still an important fig to have because you'll be picking figs off of this tree when the quote unquote higher end, more premium varieties haven't even thought about ripening yet. So that's what makes this variety so advantageous. It gets us early figs where no other fig will produce. Now this fig has been ripening in really poor conditions. We got hammered by thunderstorms yesterday. So this fig right here really got soaked down. And it can be a problematic fig because it has an open eye, as you can see. However, the bugs haven't really started their reproduction cycle yet. And usually at this time of the year in July, it's still a pretty good fig. The next variety that I want to show you is Olympian. Olympian is an English brown turkey type fig and it's quite common. And uh, I actually wound up getting this tree from Lowe's. That's how common it is for something like 12 bucks. And what really impresses me is the insane production of this fig tree. This is easily one of the most productive figs that I've ever grown. The, how, how many figs are on this tree is just ridiculous. 
And the other nice thing about this fig is just how large it is. I have uh, some monster figs that are swelling, and uh, this is a very early fig. And those are all reasons why I'm recommending this variety. It is early, it is super productive, it is super easy to get. You don't have to go through any rare fig trades to try and get it. Now this fig tree is on its third season and it has been a great producer for me all three seasons. And what I can't overstate enough is how large this fig is. Just take a look at it next to my fist. That is probably going to be a 100 gram fig. And it's so hard to find a widely adaptable fig that gets this large and still has good flavor. Now this fig is called Olympian because its mother tree came from Olympia, Washington. So it's one of the few figs that is known to ripen in cooler climates with uh, shorter, cooler summers. And you can see how early it is here. It's only July 20th and I already have a massive main crop fig ready to be picked. And for the record, I could not be picking this at a worse time because we had deluge all day long Long thunderstorms yesterday however I don't want to ruin this opportunity because it's very rare that I have all three varieties that I wanted to showcase ripe at the exact same time so I think this may be a little bit early and I hope it doesn't have any bug damage to it but just look at the size of this thing this thing must be close to hundred grams and the third and final fig tree that I want to showcase for you is my Chicago Hardy fig tree. And this may come as a surprise to you because I haven't really been all that kind to this fig tree over the past few years. But that's because I have a lot of super premium varieties of figs and Chicago Hardy is kind of just a basic berry type fig. However, it's not about taste that makes fig trees a must have. It's about adaptability. This fig tree is ripening for me in early summer where none of my other varieties aside from the other two that I just showed you are. Also, I've had very heavy rains and this fig has not split on me. Now yesterday I did cheat and I did cover it with this plastic bag right here, this trash bag, because we got such a heavy rain and as a result it kind of burned up my leaves. So let that be a lesson to you, never cover your figs with a trash bag. But I have a really nice fig on here that it did successfully protect. So here's the Chicago Hardy fig and it looks pretty well ripened and one of the great things about it is how closed and tight the eye is. This is a very rain resistant fig so I'm going to pluck this off. And just look at those three beautiful figs right there. And I cannot stress enough exactly why I am recommending these figs to you. The reason why these three figs are must-haves is because of how adaptable they are to so many climates. You cannot simply purchase figs based on what the community thinks are on average the best tasting figs because they often are the least adaptable. They take the longest to ripen. They're most prone to splitting and you have the best chance of losing the crop if things don't go absolutely perfectly. Collecting all of these super premium varieties of figs won't matter if they all explode on you when it rains, if they can't tolerate the humidity, if they ripen too late and you can't get any food that ripens properly off of your trees. And you know what? Your personal tastes may love these figs and they might be your absolute favorites. It's a lot easier to build your collection around these foundational figs that will succeed where others fail. And then if you accumulate other more premium varieties and they do great in your climate and you no longer need these more common varieties, then you can get rid of them. But definitely start with them because they are great foundations to build your collection upon. Just to give you an idea on the size of these figs, this is the Chicago Hardy and that weighs in at 37 grams. Now when my tree was young I was getting figs that were around the 15 to 20 gram range so it's nice to see that it's starting to get larger as the tree gets older. Ron de Bordeaux is a smaller fig weighing around at 26 grams, 25 grams. And now I'm really excited about this Olympian. This has got to be 80 to 100. Whoa! 99 grams. That is Easily the biggest fig of the year. That's one of the biggest figs I've ever grown, period. Olympian is great because it's hard to find a fig that is this large that's also so early. Now let's cut into each of these figs. I'm hoping that none of them spoiled. So my Olympian shouldn't look like this, but the rain just kind of ruined it. Uh, usually it ripens better than this, but I'm glad to see I did get to it before it spoiled completely. You just uh, heavy rains and figs just don't they don't they're not friendly the chicago hardy actually looks pretty good 
which goes to show you how adaptable it is, how it can handle the rains. And the Ronde Bordeaux, usually this is a fig that can struggle in the rain, but because it ripens so quickly, uh, usually if you get a dry spell of only about two days or so, it will ripen for you. Let's give our first taste test of the year. <laughs> wow, that is shocking how good the Olympian is considering how much rain we just received. I thought this would be waterlogged, but it is not. I also thought this was going to be underripe. Uh, I do think it could have used another day, but I didn't want to risk the thunderstorms we're supposed to get tonight. Now, the wonderful thing about Olympian is it tastes just like peaches. If you were to blindfold somebody and give them this fig, they would think they're eating a peach. Mm. It tastes like a really juicy peach with honey. Now we'll go to the Chicago Hardy, which has a completely different flavor. And this looks actually really well ripened. Mm. And that's a completely different experience. The Chicago Hardy is a light berry fig. It almost tastes like a very light raspberry. So if you're into that sort of thing, the Chicago Hardy is right up your alley. It definitely is watered down. I've had better, uh, but it's a, it's a very mild, lightly sweet, lightly berry flavored fig. Now, Ronde Bordeaux, on the other hand, is quite different. Uh, they usually call this a resin berry fig. It has a sharper berry flavor. And this actually looks pretty well ripened, consider the rain. Mm -hmm. If you like Chicago Hardy, you will really like Ronde Bordeaux because Ronde Bordeaux is a more intense berry flavor. So out of my favorite of these three, my favorite would definitely be the Olympian uh, because I love the flavor of peaches and I love how large this fig is and how productive it is. After that, I would pick my Ronde Bordeaux Although it does have an open eye and it's, uh, it can be prone to pests come mid to late summer. Uh, it's a very flavorful fig, even though it's a pretty small size. It has a lot of uh, bite in the little package. And then Chicago Hardy, uh, I think this is a really average tasting fig. However, it is just so reliable that it's one that you really need to have because it will perform for you where other figs will fail. And it's virtually rain resistant and rot resistant and split resistant and the eye is so tight that pests don't get into it so despite how mediocre it may be in terms of flavor it's still really good because a mediocre fig is better than 99 percent of the fruits out there in my opinion and it wouldn't be a fig video without the official taste tester getting involved dale loves figs so much and i know he'll work for it dale can you give us a shake shake very good. Oh, I don't want you to fall over. Try this one, buddy. What do you think of that one? That's the Chicago Hardy. Do you like it? Does it pass the test? Would you like another one? Are you still hungry? Are you still hungry? Okay. Sit. Sit. I'll give you the big one. I'll give you the Olympian. Ready, buddy? Here's the big guy. What do you think of that one? Whoa. It's so big he dropped it. But he won't let that go to waste. <laughs> Dale, do you want another one? Come, sit. And now for the Ronde Bordeaux. What do you think of that one? Very good. Does that pass the taste test, buddy? All right, buddy. That's all the figs we have for today. I hope you enjoyed them. So that's today's video, growers. I sure hope you found it helpful, and I sure hope you found it informative as to why I'm recommending those three figs for every fig grower in pretty much every climate. Now this year, I'm going to focus a lot less on individual fig taste testings like I normally do. Instead, I'm going to do more fig comparisons. So I'm going to line up multiple varieties and make them face off, and I'll put them in different categories like the best mid-season figs and the best super premium varieties because I think that'll be a little bit more informative than simply having a basic taste test of one single variety. So gardeners, I sure hope you found today's video helpful. If you did please make sure to hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these if you're curious about any of the products that i use in my garden they are all linked in my amazon storefront down in the video description and if you're interested in any channel related merch that is all linked in my spread shop down in the video description as well if you have any questions about these figs or any other varieties please ask them in the comments below thanks again so much for watching and we hope to see all of you again on the next video